Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth video in the ordering a pizza with Python series. Now what we're going to be doing in this video is just wrapping up kind of showing the items that are on someone's order. I'm going to show you how we can remove items from the order, although I'm not really going to implement like a script that does that for us. We're actually going to sum how much all of the items that we've decided to order cost. And then we're going to display that to the user and then ask them for their credit card information so they can insert that and pay and place their order. So hopefully we'll wrap up everything in this video, although we might extend into another one depending on how long this takes. And as always, a reminder and thank you to our sponsor, Kite, for sponsoring this tutorial series. They're the ones that are providing all these awesome auto completions. You can see, like even when I'm just typing print, it gives me the completions from Kite. When I've been using some different things in the API, It'd be, it's been giving me a lot of useful suggestions for all the different methods. So for example, these methods are not built into a library, like they're just from the IB, um, the API pizza APY and kite is giving us those completions. So anyways, you can download that for free and the link in the description. All right, so let's get started. Now what I want to do is display not only what the code of a specific item is, but I'd like to show the name of that item as well as how much that item costs. So to do that, what we need to do is look at all of the information we have about a specific item. So I kind of whizzed through this in the last video, but essentially what we've done here is we said for item in order dot data products. Now products stores all of the specific items that we've added into our order and all of those items have some information associated with them, like for example, a code. So let's just print out the item, which we actually ended up doing in the previous one. So let's clear that and have a look at what this is. So let's look for an item. So let's look for just, um, I don't know, Pepsi like that. Uh, there's no results for Pepsi. Okay. So let's add something else. So let's say yes, let's look for a pizza. What do we want? Um, I like this one. So we'll take that. Can I paste that in here? No, I cannot. So I'll just type in one 12 T S I X C H S. Okay. Enter. Nope. That's all we need. And we can see this is all the information we have about our item. So quantity one price 1974. Uh, where else is the price? There's just like all this information that we have associated with this. We have the name. So 12 inch uh, thin six cheese pizza. We have what else flavor code product code code price. So we're going to use the price tag as well as the name tag to display this item in a list for us. So what I'm going to do is simply do item name plus and in this case I'm going to do a space a dollar sign uh, like that and then plus item price and make sure that we have a capital P on our price and a capital N on our name. So doing this should actually print out the items name and then the price. But I also want to collect all of these prices and add them together. So what I'm going to do is take this, I'm going to say price equals that we will just do plus price in here. And now what I'm going to do is say total equals zero. So it's going to stand for our order total. And I'm going to say total plus equals. And in this case, we're just going to say float price like that. So now we should be collecting the total in this total variable. And at the end, once we've listed all of our items, we can say your or your order total. So your if I could type correctly here, order total is colon plus. And in this case, we'll just do string total like that. And we actually might want to add a dollar sign like so. Okay, so this should tell us how much our order total is. And then after this, we can ask for the credit card information, which is what we'll do next. So let's run this python tutorial.py. Uh, you are now searching the menu, look for an item, let's just go for, you know, sprite like that. Um, so please type the codes of the items you'd like to order, press enter to stop ordering. Okay, so let's just get a 500 milliliter sprite. So 500 sprite like that. And stop now let's actually look for another item so let's get some kind of pizza so what's an easy one to type we have 10 scc can okay so 10 sc can i think that was right let's see sc can okay and then we'll say no we don't want anything more so these are our two items we have a 500 milliliter sprite which is 177 a 10 inch hand tossed canadian pizza which is 13.99 and our order total is 15 dollars 76 cents Awesome. So let's actually just separate the order total. So it goes down one line for us a little bit easier to read. And now we need to talk about tax. So tax is interesting because this is going to depend uh, really on what state you live in or what province or even what country you live in. 
So I don't really know a way to get the tax rate from the API. So what I'm going to recommend to you guys, if you care to actually implement tax into this, and I might just even do a little plus sign and say plus tax so that people know that, you know, that is, you know, you need tax on top of that. Um, actually, we'll do plus tax like that. You could hard code some like tax variable up here and you can say like tax rates equals and in Canada for me where I live, it's 1.13. So 13% tax, which is like very high, but I know in some states it's like 7%. So you do 1.07 and then you could just multiply whatever this number is. So whatever this price number is by that tax rate and display that. Now that's up to you guys. I just figured I'd mention that in case anyone, you know, is going to get mad at me in the comments for not including the tax. Okay. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is ask the user to insert their credit card information so that they can actually place this order. Before we do that though, I will show you that if you want to remove an item from your order, you can use order remove item, and then you can use just the code of that item and it will actually remove it for you. So if you guys do want to implement that or create a more complicated program than what I'm showing you, then you can do that because the point of this is not really to make like a fully functioning program. It's just to show you guys how to work with this and how we can actually use kind of some weird, strange APIs, which this is. Okay. So how are we going to get the credit card information? Well, fortunately for us, I've actually written a um, kind of extension to this API called console.py. You guys can have a read through it. I documented it fairly well. That actually has a method inside of here that will get a user's credit card information from the console. So all we need to do is say card, which is here, is equal to, and in this case, it's going to be console input dot get underscore credit underscore card. I believe that's correct. We'll have a look here. So get underscore credit underscore card. And obviously, since we're using console input, what we need to do is import that from here. So we'll say console input at the top like that. And now we can actually use that to get the credit card. And I'm going to show you what this does. So inside of here, this is what this method is that we're calling. It asks for the payment information. It says, please enter your credit card information, enter your credit card number, expiry date, security code, zip postal code. And then it actually checks to make sure this is a valid credit card. Uh, before it returns it to us. If we have an exception, then what it does is simply calls this method again and keeps asking the user to insert their credit card. So what we're going to do now is say Python tutorial dot pi. We're going to say you're looking on the menu. Okay, so let's go for Coke. Let's go 500 um, Coke like this just because it's easy. And then we'll say no, that's all we want. Okay, so we can see your order is as follows 500 milliliter Coke. Your order total is 177 plus tax payment information, please enter your credit card information. This information will not be saved. So now we can insert a card number, um, a expiry date, three digit security code and zip slash postal code. Obviously, this is an invalid card, which it just told us. So it's asking for the payment information again. But once you insert valid payment information, then you can actually pay and make the order. So this is kind of the part of the tutorial series where like if you don't want a pizza uh, to test us out, just insert like some fake credit card numbers that are technically valid, but aren't going to have any, you know, numbers on them. And then after this, what we can do is actually place the order and see if we're going to get a pizza. Now I'm going to save that for the next video, I think, because I actually want to use this to order a pizza to my house and like make sure this works and show it to you guys. But for now, I think I might leave it at that. So essentially what we've done is we've got the credit card information. We have implemented kind of, you know, this is what the tax is going to be for your order. We've added up that we've looked at how we can use this console input. And actually I'll add one more thing because we're not quite at 10 minutes for this video yet. We'll just extend it a little bit. Um, we can actually use this console input, which I've created here to get some customer information when we're creating an order. So for right now, you see, we've actually hard coded the customer object up here. So we've said, you know, this is all the information, but what we can actually do is simply use a method from console input, which I'm going to show you to do this. So we're going to say console input dot get customer like this. You can see we have get customer. I'm actually going to do get new customer. And what this is going to do, and I'll show you because I've kind of programmed this slightly complex is ask the user to insert their information. And then we'll actually save that information into a folder so that we can access it faster the next time we want to make an order. So here we can say to start an order, you must provide the following details country. If you're ordering from Canada, please type yes. Now. So we type yes name, please enter your name. So that's Tim into your last name. We'll go with tech, uh, insert your email address. So we'll go Tim at tech with Tim dot net into your phone number. So we'll go 905-777-7777. And then address, we need to insert something here. So I'm just going to say 40 Bay Street, uh, Toronto, Ontario. What was the postal code of this? 
that's a good question. I need to just look at the postal code here before I can insert this. So that was, oops, let's go over here. So M five J X two. Okay. So let's paste that in there, hit enter. And then there we go. It shows us the closest store. So which is that Asks us for the menu. Let's look for Coke. We can add items to our order now. So 500 Coke. No, we don't want to add anything more Ask us for our payment information. And there we go. We've pretty much almost finished this program. So anyways, that has been it for this video. You guys can mess around with this looking console input if you want to see what I've actually written here and kind of how this works and how these things are validated. And with that being said, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and in the next video, we will be ordering a pizza.